Hello and welcome to Archaeological Minecraft. I'm a former archaeologist who enjoys playing Minecraft and thought it would be fun to combine the two. In today's episode, we're on the Archaeo SMP and I want to do some work on my base. See, the problem I have here is that a lot of my base, here let me jump over here and you can see, it still has starter farms. So melon and pumpkin, you can't see it but my sheep and cows are in here. It's even got my starter sugarcane area right there and bamboo and whatnot. Now, a lot of the things that I've built on my base are Irish themed. So here's a bell tower or round tower there. There's a tower house in the background. And yes, tower houses were also in Scotland, but certainly in Ireland. And then if I walk over this direction here, you can see my promontory fort, which is also Irish. So what I want to do in this episode is build a number of small Irish houses around the base to really lock everything together. So I was thinking building some Irish historical houses of different eras around the base that so that as you're walking from one build in the base to another build in the base, you can kind of see something as you're going along the roads and really tie everything together because the base just doesn't feel finished. It feels like montages of a number of different smaller builds that really aren't interconnected. So the first one I was going to build as I fly over here is some Irish beehive huts over in this area and then maybe replace my animal pens over there with a cashel and then let me fly over here. I was thinking some Irish vernacular houses here. Let me land some Irish vernacular houses here as you're coming along the road. So those are the Irish traditional houses that are the whitewashed with a thatch roof. And so hopefully that'll tie everything together, make everything feel really nice, clean everything up remove all the starter farms. So let's get cracking on. So this first type of Irish house is called a closhan, or a beehive hut. They're most common in the southwest of Ireland, and I modeled these off some I visited once on a trip to the Dingle Peninsula in County Kerry, Ireland. These simple huts are made from native stone from the area around where they were constructed and are a dry stone construction, meaning the stone are not held together with mortar. They're just kind of fit together like building blocks. They're also a great example of corbeling. That's where one stone stacked on top of the other until they meet at the top. They're normally around 6 meters or around 20 feet in diameter, and the walls can be up to 1.5 meters or 3 to 5 feet thick. It's estimated that there used to be around 450 of these huts at the site I visited, which is called Fahan, but there aren't any close to that number now. Let me pop up a map real quick, and you can see what I'm talking about. This is the Dingle Peninsula here, and Fahan is right around here. It's thought that these originally were used and constructed by early monks and may date back to around 700 AD, but they continued to be in use through the 12th century into the Norman era of Ireland. If you've seen one of the latest Star Wars movies, I think it was The Last Jedi, the island that Luke Skywalker was hanging out at was filmed at Scalig Michael, which is an island monastic community of beehive huts. And so you see those beehive huts in the movie. The idea behind placing it here is really to help pull the eye around the bend in the pathway as you walk around. So let's quickly fly up there and see what that looks like. And if I successfully, at least in my mind, you can tell me in the comments if you disagree, if I successfully pull the eye around and keep interesting things to look at as you're walking through my base. As I'm coming around this bend here, you can see that, and I need to get rid of this torch spam here, but you can see as I'm rounding this here, you can start seeing this out in the distance, so it's not just vacant land, and then, you know, maybe I'll add a, a waterfall and a little water feature here eventually, and then maybe some terracing on the farm, but you really, as you kind of round this, uh, this road here, 
and, and walk down into this little beehive hut village. You can start seeing this develop, and then you start seeing the one up there on this little hill, you know, come around the bend, see just interesting things as you're walking across. Maybe I should build one here eventually, but I, I didn't want to obstruct the view of this uh, this new bridge I built uh, spanning over from my from my island base over to where the amphitheater Pompeii is. And so the idea behind this one, this is kind of the, the back-end lore, is that this used to be an old Roman aqueduct or old Roman bridge that's fallen in disrepair and, and on the state of near collapse. But then at some later time, people have come by and then kind of built these wooden scaffolding across this little wooden bridge so that they can get across. And and so let, let, let's let's continue traveling down. You can see, you can also see as you, you continue to round the bend, you can see my my promontory fort. So let's see what this looks like from on top of this rickety old bridge, um, which uh, perhaps used to have an old old tower at the one side. So yes, yeah, so you can see kind of at the point of near collapse here. But yeah, you can look across and you see the see the beehive huts, and then let's see what that looks like coming back the other direction. Um, say hi to my camel there. So yes, you start walking up here, climbing the ridge, and then yeah, so coming over the ridge here, you see the beehive huts come across. And so yeah, so I think think this side may be taken care of. I think this bridge is pretty well. So let's go, let's go to the next Irish house. Okay, so I think this place is looking a little better. You can see that I finished my cashel here. That's what this item is. It's a cashel. And then you can see I cleaned this area up over here as well and uh, built a nice little pond, a little garden around there right next to the aqueduct. So the aqueduct just dumps right in there. So I'll talk a little bit about the uh, the cashel here now. So a cashel is a type of ring fort. And I did a whole episode about ring forts in the past, so if you want to learn more in depth about the structure and their use cases, you can check out that video on my channel. But cashels are basically a stone-built ring fort. So ring forts are typically made out of earth with perhaps a ditch embankment around or a double ditch embankment, and then a ridge of earth, uh, like a little mound, a circular mound of earth. And But cashels were, were built of, of stone, as you can see here. And cashels were usually a little bit smaller than ring forts. So generally speaking, this cashel is about on the average side. It's based on the Liankabuli cashel, which I'll put up on screen here. And I liked that cashel because it really showed off a couple of the traits of cashels. So obviously stone construction, like I said, and about two meters high, uh, and then about two to three meters in the exterior depth here, which uh, I replicated and then you can see in the picture that was all covered with sod and grass so I covered the top all with moss and then on the inside of cashels there's usually a stone building and the earlier one would be a round stone roundhouse so this would be the foundations of the roundhouse over here and then after the Norman era they started transitioning from roundhouses like it was in the the earlier eras to square houses and so you can see that built here and the, the Liankabuli Cashel shows that, where there's, like like I did here, a roundhouse in the back of the foundations of a roundhouse in back, and then right in front of it was built a square house to fit the newer style. So I'm pointing out the differences between these two huts, the round one and then the square one, really to draw attention, because I think this is one of the interesting things that you can learn about archaeology, as it certainly as it relates to culture, is... If you think about it, cultures typically either live in round houses or live in square houses or rectangular houses. And so when you see a cultural shift or you see an archaeological shift, 
between a culture that's living in round houses and then transition to living in square shaped houses, that doesn't necessarily mean that the population was displaced, although it could mean that, but it really speaks to a shift in the predominant culture in that area. So for the Irish, they used to live in round houses, but then ended up transitioning more to square houses after the Norman invasion. So Cashel's day tour around the same time period as the beehive huts I talked about earlier. So on the earliest side, around 600 to 700 AD, and then they go all the way into the Norman era of around 1150. So it really depends on the Cashel as to when they were inhabited in that range. So the other thing I built here just to round out the area is this little this little uh, pond. So nothing too complex, but just to make the area look a little prettier as you're walking through the path. Just something else to look at. And then it would be a shame if the aqueduct was just blocked off. Uh, it's, it's nice that it's feeding into somewhere. And a nice little pond, I think, is a good way to do it. So with the first two types of charming little Irish houses out of the way, let's jump into the third one, which dates quite a bit later than these. These are in the medieval era to Iron Age, where the next one we're going to be building is much closer to the modern era. Okay, so we finished the last of our three charming little historical Irish house builds. And this one, as I mentioned earlier, is your traditional Irish vernacular house. Vernacular architecture, otherwise known as folk architecture, really just means that this is architecture used by the everyday, ordinary person, and usually for a domestic purpose. So basically, I built a typical Irish cottage or dwelling for around the 18th to 19th centuries. Though, these houses continued to be used after that, and no doubt you can easily find them today, like on Pinterest or whatnot. Depending on where this was built in Ireland, the walls would either have been made of sod or stone, depending on the availability of local building materials, and then whitewashed to keep out the damp. So you see I used bone blocks to represent that, since that's my go-to block for when I want to show whitewashing. The roofs would have been thatched and would have been supported by the walls, so no interior beams within the house. To approximate the thatched, I use hay bales. I thought about strip bamboo blocks or mangrove roots, but I like the look of the hay bale blocks a little bit better to my eye. Depending on how wealthy the house owner was, these would have had one, two, or perhaps three rooms. So let me pop inside so I can better talk about that. Okay, so there would always have been one room with the fireplace being at the narrow end of the house and not along the long axis. And that narrower depth was less than 20 feet. And so I made my replica seven meters or seven blocks deep to approximate that. The door would have been centrally located along the long axis and any other openings for windows would have also been on that long axis. And they would have been small and square shaped. There was also often a rear door that was directly across from the front door, but that wasn't usually used to go in and out of the house, but rather to regulate the temperature coming off the hearth. The front door, which iconically was painted red, could be split into an upper section and a lower section, also to help regulate the temperature. That's why I not only put a red mangrove door on the cottage front door, but I also put a mangrove trap door out front so I could have the lower entrance closed while I could have the upper part stay open. Irish vernacular cottages didn't have windows or other openings on the ends of the houses, unlike their English counterparts at the same time. There also weren't any hallways or passages. Everything was in one big room. There was also sometimes a small bump out or nook called an outshot next to the fireplace, which was just large enough for a bed. So that's oftentimes where a bed was. The cottage was really utilitarian and was minimally decorated almost without any embellishments. When there was a second room, like I built in this case, it would be located on the 
other side of the wall from the fireplace and it was often a bedroom and so you can see that's how i mocked it up here in my cottage in this recreation sometimes there was a third room and that would be across the way on the other side across the room from the fireplace and if that was the case it would be another bedroom or sometimes a parlor but i didn't have room here in my base to fit that large of a build so i just kept it to the two rooms and i kind of like the size of my quaint little cottage well, that wraps up this video. I know this video was a little bit different, and instead of going deeper on just one type of historical or archaeological structure, I covered a number of them. But hopefully you enjoyed it and liked seeing how I try and incorporate these kind of builds into my own Minecraft base. As normal, I dropped some of the links to resources I used to research this episode in the description below. So check them out if you want to learn more. And make sure to take the time, if you like the video, to like, subscribe, and all that stuff. And if you want to see more videos about different builds, that I've done on the Archeo SMP, please check those out here. Thanks, have a good rest of your day. Bye for now.